I'm Corrigan Ehrlich, the Solutions Engineer at HashiCorp, and I'm here today to talk to you about Terraform and some of the challenges that organizations can face when they look to adopt this at scale internally in their organization. So I'm going to walk you through the typical adoption patterns we see uh, internally in organizations. So typically, you'll see a single developer writing Terraform configuration files that live locally on their laptops. They have a set of credentials that give them the ability to deploy to the cloud or hybrid cloud environment, whatever platform they may be using. Uh, they will first off run what we call a plan in order to see what Terraform intends to go build based on what they've defined in their configuration files. And then if everything looks good, they will run a Terraform apply, which will then go and build those resources in those various platforms. Once this has been complete, Terraform generates what we call the state file, which is essentially the source of truth, a living record of what Terraform has gone and built in those platforms. And this is tremendously powerful as now it becomes an iterative process where any updates to that configuration, Terraform is able to essentially perform a diff and understand what's been added, what's been removed, what's been changed, and only concern itself with those differences. So it provides a degree of item potency. But Typically, you're never going to see a single developer working alone. They don't operate in a vacuum. You're going to want to enable multiple teams or team members within the same team to work with this same tool. And you need a certain degree of collaboration. So phase one here is usually let's push these files to version control so that at a minimum, developers can work off of these configurations and follow the same Git workflows that they do for their application uh, code de development. The second challenge they typically encounter is you'll notice there are two state files in this picture, and you also want to make sure that they are working off of the same corresponding state file. So in order to solve for this, the next phase is usually pushing it to some sort of remote storage, whether this is S3 or Azure Blob storage or console. The key idea here being now these developers are able to collaborate on the same configuration files, and they also can ensure that they are working off of the same corresponding state files. And as you can see, uh, multiple developers in this picture usually starts to grow rather quickly. So you never have just two team members, you have 100, or maybe your organization scales to 1,000. So now that you've solved this initial challenge of how to enable collaboration, ensuring that these developers are working off of the same configuration files and the same corresponding state file, you start to see a, a proliferation of these configurations, each of which might represent an individual project or set of independently managed infrastructure. And so ultimately, what you begin to see is a proliferation of configurations and also state files. Now, from a security perspective, this introduces a number of different challenges. First off, you ultimately want to limit access to these state files and adhere to least privilege internally. You want to make sure that you establish your own RBAC around these to ensure that team A can access team A's state files, team B, team B's, but really you don't give everyone access to everything. Secondarily, you see that in this instance, everyone has their own sets of credentials to enable them to provision since these commands are happening locally on their machines. And now what you start to see is what we refer to as secret sprawl, where uh, now everyone has their own sets of credentials and it becomes incumbent upon the individual to adhere to security best practices. You're ultimately relying on everyone to keep these secure, to not check them into version control, which unfortunately does happen. Uh, and that just becomes a significant increase in your risk uh, and your security exposure. The second challenge you start to experience is one of workflows. So because all of these commands and these deployments are happening locally, oftentimes it becomes very difficult for you to enforce your desired uh, process. So in this case, this could represent a developer, say, forking a repository and deploying against that, or let's say accidentally forgetting to pull the latest version from master or switching off of their test branch locally before they deployed. And now you have to go through what amounts to a very painful reconciliation process to ensure what exists in the master branch of version control is in fact reflective of what exists in your environment, which is really paramount here for your security. As any of these resources that are provisioned out of band or out of your, your prescribed workflow uh, potentially aren't adhering to your best practice. And then finally, the last instance that I'll, I'll highlight here today is potentially uh, individuals sidestepping this entirely. So because every individual in this case likely will have their own sets of credentials, there's really nothing stopping them from, say, logging in directly to these cloud pl platforms, spinning up their own infrastructure outside of the, the Terraform workflow, and now you've lost all visibility and control over what these individuals are doing. So again, best case here is you now have 
unaccounted for costs. Maybe they're not tagging their infrastructure, so it becomes very difficult once you do discover this to track it back to the appropriate business unit. But you also introduce significant risk as these individuals may or may not be, say, applying best practice security groups or they are deploying VMs that are open to the internet. So as you can see, Terraform adoption across large organizations presents certain challenges related to security, managing credentials, for example, establishing RBAC around your very sensitive state files, as well as controlling your prescriptive workflows internally, making sure that individuals are following end-to-end -end exactly the process that you uh, have defined for your organization, and ensuring that they aren't doing anything risky in, in the cloud or on-premise. To learn more, visit HashiCorp.com slash Terraform.